Measles is the topic, also known as rubiola. Measles is a childhood illness that worldwide annually has 20 million cases. And of those, 200,000 approximately deaths. And mostly kids are involved in measles. But routine childhood vaccinations have helped to dramatically reduce the incidence of measles. For example, in the US, because of routine childhood vaccinations, there's been only 63 cases per year in the past decade or so. However, this number has been rising in the United States and Canada because of immigrants coming from unvaccinated populations. So as you can see the importance of vaccination, you have 63 cases a year only in a population that receives regular childhood immunizations. And then worldwide you have 20 million cases, obviously in geographic areas where children do not receive regular childhood vaccinations. A little bit about pathophysiology. The virus that's involved in measles is called paramyxovirus and it is highly contagious. Measles is spread mostly by secretions from the nose, throat, and mouth. And when somebody coughs, these respiratory droplets are discharged into the air. In terms of symptoms, symptoms of measles include fever and what they call the three C's, cough, conjunctivitis, and coryza, which means runny nose. So you have the three C's in there. Fortunately, there are some things that are very specific to measles, since these are very nonspecific symptoms. The first is something known as coplic spots. And coplic spots are small spots that resemble grains of white sand, and they're found in the mouth, on the oral mucosa, opposite the first and second molars. And I have a couple pictures of coplic spots I'll show you. So here's the first one. They're very small but I hope you can see where those arrows are pointing to. You can see those small tiny white spots. And here's another one that points to a picture of a coplic spot on a person's oral mucosa. The next thing that is also fortunately specific to measles is the rash. Now the rash by itself, the way it looks, is not that specific. It's just a maculopapular rash. But the way it spreads is a little bit of a diagnostic clue. It spreads in a way known as cephalocaudly. It starts at the head cephalo and spreads down to the body. So it would begin on the face and behind the ears and then this rash would spread downward toward the trunk and extremities. So the distribution and the way it spreads is important. And I'll show you a few pictures. So here's the rash, the way it looks. Here's another picture of a person with measles. And this is a picture that shows the distribution. As you can see initially, starts in the face, behind the ears, and then later spreads downward, eventually going all the way down to the lower extremities. Complications. Unfortunately, measles can progress to rather serious complications such as pneumonia, 
SSPE, which is an abbreviation for subacute sclerosing panencephalitis, and otitis media. Among all the complications, otitis media is by far the most common. Diagnosis. Measles is really a clinical diagnosis based on physical exam and symptomatology, but you can do blood tests. And those blood tests involve measuring the measles IgM antibody. And you can also detect the virus by doing a culture or PCR of either the throat swab or a culture of the nasopharyngeal swab. In terms of treatment, surprisingly treatment is mostly supportive. Antivirals are actually not used. So you just treat the fever, hydration as necessary. However, giving the patient vitamin A has been shown to be beneficial and the reason is because a lot of patients that have low levels of vitamin A will have a severe case of measles. And of course because measles is highly contagious limit the contacts that the patient has in particular during those first four days after the rash begins because that is the period when the patient is most contagious. And finally, I want to talk about prevention. Prevention is extremely important. You saw earlier in the video what vaccination can do. It can decrease the incidence of measles dramatically. And the vaccine is MMR, measles, mumps, rubella, and it's given in two doses. The first dose, of course, when the child is about 12 to 15 months of age. And the second dose is given when the child is between about four to six years of age. And lastly, I wanted to say that this vaccine can also be given to contacts of the patient within three days of exposure. So now let's take a look at a few clinical vignettes. A three-year-old girl who is a recent immigrant to Canada presents to your clinic. Her mother reports that her daughter has had fever, cough for three days. On physical exam, she has a temperature of 39.7, injected conjunctiva, and red spots on her buccal mucosa. She is normotensive and communicative which of the following agents is the cause of her disease. They describe the conjunctivitis, the cough, and they talk about what are coplic spots. And also the fact that she's recently arrived, perhaps from an area of the world that routine vaccinations are not done. And the virus involved is paramyxo. The only thing that was a little strange was the fact that they called it red. But if you go back and take a look at those coplic spots, you do see that sometimes they are surrounded by a little bit of a red border. This one kind of shows that a little bit more. So perhaps that's what they're referring to. This child's disease may be associated with a deficiency of or Earlier we talked about how patients who have vitamin A deficiency are associated with a severe case of measles. So the answer is choice A. Which of the following treatments do you recommend? Interestingly, measles is actually treated with supportive care. Uh, it's not treated with antibiotics or antivirals. So the answer to this question is E, observation. Although it is prevented with routine vaccination. I just wanted to mention a little bit about choice B. Immunoglobulin can be given prophylactically to patients who are at high risk. 
Next question. A five-year-old child who has not had routine pediatric care develops a febrile disease with cough and a blotchy rash and is brought to the emergency room. On physical exam, there is a cervical and axillary lymphadenopathy. Also noted, it is an erythematous maculopapular rash behind the ears and along the hairline involving the neck and to a lesser extent, the trunk. Exam of this patient's oropharynx would likely reveal which of the following lesions. Again, a lot of childhood disorders have a lot in common, so it's very difficult, but this one is describing measles, and what they're saying is if you look in the child's mouth, what would you see? And a pathognomic sign of measles is those coplic spots, and those are best described by choice E. Parents bring their internationally adopted two-year-old child to the pediatrician's office because he has a temperature of 40 Celsius and a morbilliform rash. The parents state that the patient has been in Canada for only five days and was scheduled for a well-child visit at the end of the week. They report that they thought the child had an upper respiratory infection until the rash began this morning. According to the father, the confluent maculopapular rash started cephalad and spread caudad to include the palms and soles. The mother also notes that prior to developing the rash, the child had a dry cough, clear discharge from the nose, and conjunctivitis. The immunization status is unknown. Which of the following complications is most likely to develop in this child? This vignette gives you a lot more clues in my opinion. They describe the three C's, the cough, the coryza, and the conjunctivitis, and they describe very nicely the cephalocaudal distribution of the rash where it begins you know, on the face and then spreads down to the trunk and extremities. So there's no doubt that it's measles. They're asking what's the most common complication, and the answer to that is otitis media, which would be choice E.